Chapter 12 In the seventh year of Jehu, Jehoash began to reign, and he reigned forty years in Jerusalem. His mother's name was Zebiah of Beersheba. And Jehoash did what was right in the eyes of the Lord all his days, because Jehoiada the priest instructed him. Nevertheless, the high places were not taken away. The people continued to sacrifice and make offerings on the high places. Jehoash said to the priests, All the money of the holy things that is brought into the house of the Lord, the money for which each man is assessed, the money from the assessment of persons, and the money that a man's heart prompts him to bring into the house of the Lord, let the priests take each from his donor and let them repair the house wherever any need of repairs is discovered. But by the twenty-third year of King Jehoash, the priests had made no repairs on the house. Therefore King Jehoash summoned Jehoiada the priest and the other priests and said to them, Why are you not repairing the house? Now therefore take no more money from your donors, but hand it over for the repair of the house. So the priests agreed that they should take no more money from the people, and that they should not repair the house. Then Jehoiada the priest took a chest and bored a hole in the lid of it, and set it beside the altar on the right side as one entered the house of the Lord. And the priests who guarded the threshold put in it all the money that was brought into the house of the Lord. And whenever they saw that there was much money in the chest, the king's secretary and the high priest came up, and they bagged and counted the money that was found in the house of the Lord. Then they would give the money that was weighed out into the hands of the workmen who had the oversight of the house of the Lord. And they paid it out to the carpenters and the builders who worked on the house of the Lord, and to the masons and the stone cutters, as well as to buy timber and quarried stone for making repairs on the house of the Lord, and for any outlay for the repairs of the house. But there were not made for the house of the Lord basins of silver, snuffers, bowls, trumpets, or any vessels of gold or of silver from the money that was brought into the house of the Lord, for that was given to the workmen who were repairing the house of the Lord with it. And they did not ask for an accounting from the men into whose hand they delivered the money to pay out to the workmen, for they dealt honestly. The money from the guilt offerings and the money from the sin offerings was not brought into the house of the Lord. It belonged to the priests. At that time Hazel king of Syria went up and fought against Gath and took it. But when Hazel set his face to go up against Jerusalem, Jehoash king of Judah took all the sacred gifts that Jehoshaphat and Jehoram and Ahaziah his fathers, the kings of Judah, had dedicated and his own sacred gifts, and all the gold that was found in the treasuries of the house of the Lord and of the king's house, and sent these to Hazel king of Syria. Then Hazel went away from Jerusalem. Now the rest of the acts of Joash and all that he did, are they not written in the book of the chronicles of the kings of Judah? His servants arose and made a conspiracy, and struck down Joash in the house of Milo, on the way that goes down to Silla. It was Josachar the son of Shimeath, and Jehozabad the son of Shomer, his servants, who struck him down so that he died. And they buried him with his fathers in the city of David, and Amaziah his son reigned in his place. Chapter 3 But understand... Chapter 2 You then, my child, be strengthened by the grace that is in Christ Jesus. And what you have heard from me in the presence of many witnesses, entrust to faithful men who will be able to teach others also. Share in suffering as a good soldier of Christ Jesus. No soldier gets entangled in civilian pursuits, since his aim is to please the one who enlisted him. An athlete is not crowned unless he competes according to the rules. It is the hard-working farmer who ought to have the first share of the crops. Think over what I say, for the Lord will give you understanding in everything. Remember Jesus Christ, risen from the dead, the offspring of David, as preached in my gospel, for which I am suffering, bound with chains as a criminal. But the word of God is not bound. Therefore I endure everything for the sake of the elect, that they also may obtain the salvation that is in Christ Jesus with eternal glory. The saying is trustworthy, for... If we have died with him, we will also live with him. If we endure, we will also reign with him. If we deny him, 
he also will deny us. If we are faithless, he remains faithful, for he cannot deny himself. Remind them of these things, and charge them before God, not to quarrel about words, which does no good, but only ruins the hearers. Do your best to present yourself to God as one approved, a worker who has no need to be ashamed, rightly handling the word of truth. But avoid irreverent babble, for it will lead people into more and more ungodliness, and their talk will spread like gangrene. Among them are Hymenaeus and Philetus, who have swerved from the truth, saying that the resurrection has already happened. They are upsetting the faith of some. But God's firm foundation stands, bearing this seal. The Lord knows those who are His. And let everyone who names the name of the Lord depart from iniquity. Now in a great house there are not only vessels of gold and silver, but also of wood and clay, some for honorable use, some for dishonorable. Therefore, if anyone cleanses himself from what is dishonorable, he will be a vessel for honorable use, set apart as holy, useful to the master of the house, ready for every good work. So flee youthful passions and pursue righteousness, faith, love, and peace, along with those who call on the Lord from a pure heart. Have nothing to do with foolish, ignorant controversies. You know that they breed quarrels. And the Lord's servant must not be quarrelsome, but kind to everyone, able to teach, patiently enduring evil, correcting his opponents with gentleness. God may perhaps grant them repentance leading to a knowledge of the truth, and they may come to their senses and escape from the snare of the devil after being captured by him to do his will. Chapter 3 And the Lord said to me, Go again. Love a woman who is loved by another man and is an adulteress, even as the Lord loves the children of Israel, though they turn to other gods and love cakes of raisins. So I bought her for fifteen shekels of silver and a homer and a lethek of barley. And I said to her, You must dwell as mine for many days. You shall not play the whore or belong to another man. So will I also be to you. For the children of Israel shall dwell many days without king or prince, without sacrifice or pillar, without ephod or household gods. Afterward the children of Israel shall return and seek the Lord their God, and David their king, and they shall come in fear to the Lord and to his goodness in the latter days. Chapter 4 Hear the word of the Lord, O children of Israel, for the Lord has a controversy with the inhabitants of the land. There is no faithfulness or steadfast love, and no knowledge of God in the land. There is swearing, lying, murder, stealing, and committing adultery. They break all bounds, and bloodshed follows bloodshed. Therefore the land mourns, and all who dwell in it languish, and also the beasts of the field and the birds of the heavens, and even the fish of the sea are taken away. Yet let no one contend, and let none accuse, for with you is my contention, O priest. You shall stumble by day, the prophet also shall stumble with you by night, and I will destroy your mother. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Because you have rejected knowledge, I reject you from being a priest to me. And since you have forgotten the law of your God, I also will forget your children. The more they increased, the more they sinned against me. I will change their glory into shame. They feed on the sin of my people. They are greedy for their iniquity. And it shall be like people, like priest. I will punish them for their ways and repay them for their deeds. They shall eat, but not be satisfied. They shall play the whore, but not multiply, because they have forsaken the Lord to cherish whoredom, wine, and new wine, which take away the understanding." My people inquire of a piece of wood, and their walking staff gives them oracles. For a spirit of whoredom has led them astray, and they have left their God to play the whore. They sacrifice on the tops of the mountains and burn offerings on the hills under oak, poplar, and terebinth, because their shade is good. Therefore your daughters play the whore, and your brides commit adultery. I will not punish your daughters when they play the whore, nor your brides when they commit adultery. 
for the men themselves go aside with prostitutes and sacrifice with cult prostitutes, and a people without understanding shall come to ruin. Though you play the whore, O Israel, let not Judah become guilty. Enter not into Gilgal, nor go up to beth and swear not, as the Lord lives, like a stubborn heifer. Israel is stubborn. Can the Lord now feed them like a lamb in a broad pasture? Ephraim is joined to idols. Leave him alone. When their drink is gone, they give themselves to whoring. Their rulers dearly love shame. A wind has wrapped them in its wings, and they shall be ashamed because of their sacrifices. Psalm 62 To the choir master, according to Jeduthun, a psalm of David. For God alone my soul waits in silence. From him comes my salvation. He alone is my rock and my salvation, my fortress. I shall not be greatly shaken. How long will all of you attack a man to batter him like a leaning wall, a tottering fence? They only plan to thrust him down from his high position. They take pleasure in falsehood. They bless with their mouths, but inwardly they curse. Selah. For God alone, O my soul, wait in silence, for my hope is from him. He only is my rock and my salvation, my fortress. I shall not be shaken. On God rests my salvation and my glory. My mighty rock, my refuge, is God. Trust in him at all times, O people. Pour out your heart before him. God is a refuge for us. Selah. Those of low estate are but a breath. Those of high estate are a delusion. In the balances they go up. They are together lighter than a breath. Put no trust in extortion. Set no vain hopes on robbery. If riches increase, set not your heart on them. Once God has spoken, twice have I heard this, that power belongs to God, and that to you, O Lord, belongs steadfast love. For you will render to a man according to his work. Psalm 63 A Psalm of David when he was in the wilderness of Judah. O oh God, you are my God. Earnestly I seek you. My soul thirsts for you. My flesh faints for you, as in a dry and weary land where there is no water. So I have looked upon you in the sanctuary, beholding your power and glory. Because your steadfast love is better than life, my lips will praise you. So I will bless you as long as I live. In your name I will lift up my hands. My soul will be satisfied as with fat and rich food, and my mouth will praise you with joyful lips when I remember you upon my bed and meditate on you in the watches of the night. For you have been my help, and in the shadow of your wings I will sing for joy. My soul clings to you, your right hand upholds me. But those who seek to destroy my life shall go down into the depths of the earth. They shall be given over to the power of the sword, they shall be a portion for jackals. But the king shall rejoice in God. All who swear by him shall exult, for the mouths of liars will be stopped. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Father, your hand is upon us, each and every one of us, even and especially when we don't recognize it, we don't see it, we take it for granted. You are <laughs> unchanging. Your, your glory, your <clears throat> purity, your power, your wrath against evil are constant and unchanging you don't waver yet our emotions do waver our vision wavers our motivation wavers yet you are constant lord thank you for this day thank you for 
my friends, my brothers and sisters here. Father, we ask that you give us a vision for 2024. Give us a vision to pursue you and what we are to do uh, as your kingdom, as your kingdom members, as bricks in the building, in, in the new Jerusalem, as you construct it. We are part of that construction. Show us the path forward. <clears throat> Thank you for this time. In Jesus' name, amen. Good morning, everyone, and a Merry Christmas, a belated Merry Christmas, and an early Happy New Year. <clears throat> um, I am under the weather. <laughs> I don't get sick. I never get sick. And I just I started feeling it <clears throat> two or three days before Christmas. And <clears throat> so I I did a lot of resting. <laughs> did a lot of resting and relaxing over the over the holiday, uh, even when my family. Good morning, mom. Even when my family had events to go to, I stayed behind so as not to spread whatever this is. I don't know that it's contagious or anything, but I developed a, I developed a cough yesterday. So pray for me to heal quickly. Um, let's get straight to the word. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hold on a sec. Hold on. I'm going to put the, the banner get made. Yes, there it is. Put that up. Put the scrolling banner up as well. Where's that? All right. Here we go. The end of the year is upon us. So it'll be one week from today. Or no, one week from yesterday. We will be in 2024. So six days and counting. <laughs> mom crawled out of bed late yes <laughs> me too <laughs> and me three and me four all right get straight to the word of god second kings do i have this right yeah 12 <clears throat> speaking of crawling out of bed late <clears throat> producer zeke was a little late this morning as well i woke him up a little a little over an hour ago saying hey hey we need this thing he so he he quickly got this thing done Take zinc. Yeah, I took some zinc. I need to take some more zinc. Thank you, Carrie. Every let's see two zinc once every 24 hours with food. Mm, do that one day longer than feel right. Okay. Thank you, Carrie. <laughs> Actually, we do have some zinc. So I as soon as this is done, I'm gonna be go go do that because I completely forgot to do it yesterday. Love you, mom. We were we were sending pictures back and forth yesterday of Christmas. Uh, celebrations. Uh, I want to go on that tangent, but we need to go to the Word of God. So, uh, what do we have here in this chat? In this chapter, um, thank you, Jacqueline. My wife gives me zinc, so I'm going to take the zinc and continue to rest. Thank goodness that I we are working from home this all this week, so I don't have to go into the office. Okay. This chapter of 2 Kings 12 essentially is the antidote or the answer to corruption, right? The corruption at the highest levels of our government. Why do I say that? Well, this <laughs> outlines that this good king, right? Um, Joash, is that right? Is my, yeah, yeah. And Joash did what was right in the eyes of the Lord for the most part. He didn't tear down certain high places or anything but he did an analysis like he did a, a um an audit right, if you will an audit of the government of his governing rulership which which includes the priesthood and the temple um and so and often i've i've mentioned that the temple uh is the like the white house combined with the pentagon combined with the vatican right it's the center for political military and spiritual rulership or leadership and so that's when we hear the temple it's not just the religious side it's it's the civil and military aspects of the government and so um he does an analysis of the funding you know the budget we are in those budget talks constantly we hear that in the news and notice this so it got more money 
than they need. <laughs> more money than they need, right? If you have more money than you need, uh, think about you know what we're used to as, as our political leaders. If you have more money than what you need and your money comes from taxes, what do our what do our government officials do? Okay, besides lining their pockets, besides giving themselves raises, they find things, they create things to spend the money on, right? It's like, hmm, we got too much money. Let's figure out a way to spend that money. And then they they establish, you know, they pass legislation and they create departments, right? They create a, a, a governing head of this department and they say, here's some money for you to spend. And that person's like, oh, I got to figure out why they created this department and what to spend it on. And then they establish a, you know, a government office. And then when the money stops coming, they're like, well, we created this government office. It must be there for a reason. So we need to figure out how to pay for that government office, right? So they take the money, they create something that wasn't necessary. And then when the money goes away, they are they have budget shortfall and then they, they pitch, we need to raise taxes, right? That's just the corruption at work. But here, the opposite, this is the cure for corruption. We got too much money, stop taking money. <laughs> like he's like, wait a minute, we have too much more money than we need. Uh, stop collecting money. The king says, stop. And then he makes sure they spend it on what they're supposed to. What do we? Oh, we need to rebuild the temple, refurbish the temple. We need to fix things up. So he correctly directs that money. What? All right. Uh, <laughs> I'm not following the comments right now. <clears throat> got to stick to the word all right so that's you know a nice picture of how government should be run <laughs> in this chapter of second kings moving on to second uh to second timothy all the way down i'm just going to read this uh um, verses 11 12 and 13 uh but the context is therefore i endure everything for the sake of the elect that they also may obtain the salvation that is in Christ Jesus with eternal. Okay, well, quick point here. Endure everything for the sake of the elect. What is Paul talking about? The elect. Why he's he's enduring everything for the sake of the elect that they may also obtain the salvation that is in Christ Jesus with eternal glory. Wait a minute. I thought it's those who receive salvation are the elect. This seems counterintuitive. This seems like a circular argument. Paul. Uh, how can you endure for the elect so that they'll receive Christ to be the elect? No. So what he's talking about, the elect, the chosen ones, the Hebrews, right? In this context, the elect are the, the chosen people, the Hebrews. And Paul is like, they also may obtain. Paul is the apostle to the Gentiles, right? And he's he's realizing, well, that the Hebrews, the Jews still need Jesus, right? The elect. All right, but this is, the saying is trustworthy for, and here we have an indented uh, little section, you know, a little a saying, um, a, a poetic um, utter, utterance of truth. <clears throat> and I'll, I'll get into this. For if we have died with him, we will also live with him. If we endure, we will also reign with him. For if we deny him, he also will deny us. If we are faithless, he remains faithful. For he cannot deny himself. That's something that Paul adds. But this little, um, this this is like loaded with theology in this little, I don't know if it's a quatrain, it's four lines. And what, what's he saying? The saying is trustworthy. It's like, this is an, an a earliest one of the earliest um scriptures right this is something that predated paul's writings predated uh, probably the gospel writings as well and you you'll find this in paul's right you'll find this in different places uh, referencing these phrases and paul accumulates it or incorporates it into his teaching here this is deep theology if uh if we have died with him we will also live with him right the, the 
crucifixion and resurrection he took for us. So we die. We have died in him. And so we will live as he lives. We endure. We will also reign. Um, it's interesting because if we deny him, he will deny us. If you turn from him, and this is the reference to the elect, right? The Jews rejecting Jesus, he rejects them, right? If you don't accept what he's done, you are rejected. It's your decision rejecting you, but it's also him rejecting you. But if we are faithless, he remains faithful. He cannot deny himself. He cannot deny who he is, right? He is eternal and faithful, and he cannot ever become faithless, right? That's what Paul adds to that clarification. He cannot deny himself. He cannot become something that he is not. He is faithful. Um, and Paul is, Paul is naming names here. He's calling out some people that stirring up strife or, or uh, that are thinking about themselves, let's say. He, he names them. Where, where is it? In uh, Hymenaeus and Philetus. Their names are in Scripture uh, for the, all the wrong reasons, right? They are... Let me just read this. For, uh, to, 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 to remind them of these things. Do your... Uh, verse 15, do your best to present yourselves to God as one approved, a worker who has no need to be ashamed, rightly handling the word of truth, but avoid irreverent babble, for it will lead people into more and more ungodliness, and their talk will spread like gangrene. Among them are, right? So people that are speaking against the, the truth um, will spread gangrene. It names Hymenaeus and Philetus, who have swerved from the truth, saying that the resurrection has already happened. All right, so there is, you guys all know, or I've repeated this over and over again. I am a partial preterist, which means the book of Revelation is um, was a was written to this generation, this the pre-Jerusalem destruction generation, the generation that Jesus prophesied, not one stone will remain upon another. Right? Jesus prophesied that this temple will be torn down, not stone, not one stone will remain upon another. So this is that generation, right? And all of that destruction, that that. Uh, language, the apocalyptic language used in, in the book of Daniel as well as in the book of Revelation are uh, descriptors of the heavens being destroyed, which means the Jewish rulership, right? The the Jewish temple uh, sacrifice, right? That All of that language is referencing the destruction of the old covenant, the end of the old covenant and the beginning of the new covenant, all right? And, and their partial preterism, preterism just means fulfilled things that we were we are all actually partial preterists even the people don't don't adhere to what i just said we all believe that some prophecies have been fulfilled in the past like the prophecies that christ would come from the old testament those have been fulfilled so we're all partial preterists but in the general uh, there's something called preterism that's the hyper preterism or full preterism says that also the resurrection has come the promised resurrection of the righteous and that is un, unscriptural, unbiblical, and ungodly. But these Hymenaeus and Philetus, we, we would say they are full hyperpreterists, saying that somehow that resurrection was a um, uh, metaphorical. There wasn't a literal, actual resurrection. And Paul clearly points out that that is wrong. Anybody who's a hyperpreterist or a full preterist is a heretic. The hyperpreterists, full preterists are heretics. Partial preterists are biblical uh, um, Christians, right? Biblical eschatology is that some things have been fulfilled, yet that final return and that final resurrection has yet to happen. Uh, boy, I want to go into Hosea. Uh, um, let's just go to Hosea 4 in this last minute. Hosea, um, not 3, but 4, that short one, and verses, verse 6. And this was God speaking to me this morning, at, you know, as I'm working on the messaging for my project because of the new year, I'm going full whole hog forward. Verse six, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. I'm just going to stop there because there's other places like um, knowledge is power or something. There's another verse somewhere. It says for lack of vision, the people perish. Armenia is being destroyed. The first Christian nation is being destroyed for lack of knowledge. They've turned from God. They're, they've turned from God. That's the only real answer. And something needs to unite them. And it's because they've they've turned away from Jesus. <laughs> That's it, right? And I'm going to be focusing them back in by pointing to Solomon Tolerian as a, as a 
a miraculous um, sent from God. And then through that story, pointing them to Jesus. That's the, the strategy. I'm working on that right now. Love you guys. See you tomorrow.